Hi guys, so I have finally figured out something that I wanted to do from like the very beginning of working on Travis, but I couldn't quite figure it out until now, so I'm very excited to uh, show everybody. What I wanted to do is to make basically like an artificial string and have it work just like how I would normally play on the violin. So essentially have all the notes that I would regularly play be mapped out onto my soft pots as triggers. So that way I could play certain notes and know that I am triggering something very specifically in my programming to make a sound, do something have that sort of one-to-one -one correlation with certain notes, certain fingerings on the softbox. Now I ran into a few problems when I was doing that initially. And I came up with a bunch of different solutions at the time, but none of them quite, quite worked the way I wanted them to. Now uh, I'll just pull up a different patch for a sec to sort of explain what I was going through first. So this is a, a violin fingerboard tool that I made to uh, help teach theory to my violin students. Before, my biggest issue I realized was that I was thinking chromatically. So I would try to map everything out on my soft pots with like every single little note here and it just wasn't working. And the reason why it has to do with the nature of the violin itself, how it is played. But for example, a violin could be tuned ever so slightly flatter or ever so slightly sharper on any given day. Because of this, there are two things that the player could be doing to compensate depending on their, the tuning of their v instrument on that particular day. One is that if, let's say, the violin was tuned flatter, in order to compensate, they could try to play everything a little bit sharper in order to get uh, all of those notes in tune. Now that poses a problem because then uh, the soft pots, they don't move. They don't move with the strings. So whatever spots I map out on the soft pots will not move with this new tune. Uh, the other problem that I had just remembered with uh, chromatic notes here is like, where do you define where they get cut off. Uh, for example, let's say one note is, has a range of 100 to 110, and then the next chromatic note right beside it would be 110 to a 120. Let's say those are the made up values. Well, if I play ever so slightly uh, sharp or ever so slightly flat, well then my one note that had a value of 110 to 120 is now hitting value 109. So it gets mixed up and it makes it very difficult to map out. The other thing is something that advanced players do, like myself, is make certain notes flatter and certain notes sharper on purpose, depending on the context of the piece that they are playing. Now, what I mean by that, is, let's reset here, is for example, let's say I'm playing the G minor scale, G harmonic minor. So I would play G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, and now when I hit that specific note within the scale, I'll think of that E flat being played even flatter than I would normally do. And then I would play F sharp and I would play that F sharp slightly higher than I would normally do otherwise. 
Now, I would be doing that purposefully in order to accentuate that difference within the context of the G minor scale. Uh, it's something that pretty much all advanced players do uh, to over exaggerate and it's just the way the violin works. It just sounds nicer and more in tune if we're technically out of tune for certain notes like that depending on the context. So that poses a huge issue with trying to map physical spots on the soft pots when they can be changing and adjusting constantly at any given day. My solution for that was, hey, what if I don't map every single note? What if I instead just do the whole tone scale? So the whole tone scale, there are two of them. And when it comes to it, I like to use a pitch class theory where you assign numbers to each pitch. And so there are two whole tone scales, the first being called whole tone zero, where zero is meant for pitch class C. So it would be C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, uh, B flat, and then C again. So it is maximally even, and there is always one semitone space in between each of the notes. And now that one semitone space gives enough space in between each of the notes uh, to allow a greater margin of error. And it also allows for, uh, I can play any of those notes sharper or flatter and still hit my target on the soft pot. And now if I uh, close that and open up my example patch, I don't have my violin hooked up at the moment, but that's okay. I can show off what I want to show off. So here I have little pictures of my scales just in case if I forget as I'm playing. Now. What should I start with here? Oh, the first thing is let's initialize the patch and let's uh, turn this on, turn that down. Uh, so I am using MIDI. So each of the notes that I had mapped out are assigned to MIDI notes. And I have uh, that MIDI being sent to this uh, Sonatina violin plugin. Now, for my example, I really wanted a sort of natural sounding violin sound, or as natural as I could get it. And this violin plugin was the best I could find for now. And it's pretty good, except it has some limitations. For example, the lowest note that it can play is middle C. I've tried lower notes and it will not play any lower than that one note. The other problem is that here, uh, pitch 107, if you listen closely, and pitch 108 are the same pitch. Now, technically they are different pitches, but they are sounding at the same pitch in this particular plugin. So that's a, an issue there. And then if you go to 109, it's only a semitone away from 107, the way it's sounding. Uh, so the other thing that I really liked in my other pieces, I called the snap where when I let go of my soft parts, the values would quickly, like within milliseconds, go all the way to the top before coming back down. Now, earlier in the summer, I figured out a way to prevent that here, uh, where with using this, when I let go of my soft parts, uh, the values will go down right away from whatever value I had started at with my fingers. Uh, now, 
I liked the snap for my pieces, but in terms of working with MIDI, this is very useful <laughs> and what I needed. So I'm very glad that I found a purpose for uh, my non snapping soft pops. And uh, so if I go back into presentation mode, I have the two settings here for using whole tone, uh, whole tone zero and whole tone one. And that I can switch in between with using uh, my first uh, FSR. So if I go into the uh, G string whole tone zero, Oh, first, before I even do that, uh, you may notice that there's a lot of different colors here. Uh, basically, what I did is that I assigned a color to each one of the pitch classes to make it easier in terms of organization for myself. Just in case if you're wondering why my patch is so colorful here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, here I have all the mappings on my G string here for... Uh, the zero collection. Now, the Sonatina Violin plugin, it does naturally fade out. It will not continually sustain. It, it's decay starts at around five, maybe almost five seconds, and then it completely stops at six seconds. Now, when playing violin, I don't want that. I want to be able to sustain as long as I can. So what I've done here is attached a metro. So it's going to keep uh, banging that same note until it gets an off message. Uh, so I can continually sustain uh, indefinitely because of that. Uh, so that, what else? Um, oh, so the other thing that I had forgot to mention before is that I am using envelope following. So what I'm doing is, uh, having my natural violin sound go into max and have that tracking how loud, uh, it is. Uh, so right here, there's the envelope following and then that is controlling uh, the live gain output of my MIDI sounds. So right now you can see this arrow is pretty high and it keeps moving because it's following the loudness of my voice. Uh, so if I stop talking, the arrow will go down. And I uh, start again and it goes back up. Uh, so this is, this was a really easy way to make, uh, the MIDI violin, uh, behave uh, more like a natural violin would uh, by controlling the dynamics with my bow. Uh, just just like how the sustaining also makes the MIDI behave more like a natural violin. So I don't really have a piece that uses this at the moment, uh, but I plan to. But for right now, I still want to kind of show you guys uh, how this all works so I'll pick I'll just pick up my violin and we'll see how this all goes okay so I guess I'll just start with warming up I guess just try to orientate myself around the whole tone scale still need to practice that a lot I'll get there um.
try this. Okay. Oh, and what, what I said earlier with the um, limit on this uh, particular plugin, uh, with it being middle C, it means that for my G string, the first few notes when I'm harmonizing them, I have to use harmonizations above the note that I'm playing and then flip under because I like harmonizing below because I'm a violinist. Uh, but, um, but yeah, for the first few notes, I have to harmonize above and then switch back to harmonizing below once I get to the notes that can reach that far down. Uh, yeah, so let's try it. <laughs> What if I keep changing in between? Change it up. Let's let's do something simple, but try try to change it up in between. Ah, I don't know. Oh, that's not good because then as soon as I change it, it's not getting it off. A no off message so I should change it after I lift my fingers off okay what I'd like to do eventually I think is play more on the inner string so I'm not triggering and then trigger only when I really mean it uh, to make cool harmonies in between a long flowing melody but I don't know it's a bit much for my brain right now I'll get there <laughs> I need to practice. <laughs> <laughs> 